Hello and welcome to another Demon 212 3DS review. Today I'm going to be taking a look at Luigi's Mansion 2, which I believe is something like Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon if you're in America or in Canada and things like that. Uh, yet again, don't understand why they changed the name, and in this case they've not so much changed the name, they've changed the name and the number. Um, anyway, at the start you simply choose your file, and as always I'm going to be sticking to early stuff because I don't want to spoil anything for anyone because this is pretty much going to, probably the best game to come out for the 3DS system it's like between this Fire Emblem and one or two others so far that, that so far this year it, it's just been an amazing year for the 3DS and seeing as this is pretty much the start of the year Luigi with this uh, game it's been an amazing start to the year Luigi too but uh, it does have a few problems and I will get into that in a little second or two at the, when you go into your file, you've got Dark Moon Quest, you've got the EGAD Vault where you can go in there and you can just view the things that you've uh, basically collected in that, so gems and types of ghosts and that. You've got the Thrill Tower or the, I think it's a Scarescraper again in America or something. Uh, it's basically the multiplayer mode which I will be showing off. You've then got the Dark Moon Quest where you can go in and you can go in uh, any of your old missions because it's not like... Um, Luigi's Mansion 1 uh, and there's some ways that that's a good thing and some ways that that's a bad thing so for now I'm probably going to go into Mission 2 because Mission 1 is pretty much a tutorial mission it's like you've got to find your go polter ghost you've got to uh, just get grips with the basics and that but it's one of those I was really looking forward to the game because I absolutely love the first one and anyone who's seen my review of the first one will know that because I, I simply gush about the game and gush about how much I want the sequel the it, it does a few things that I really like about it. The fact that it's now mission based, it, it actually adds a lot of replayability to it. Because instead of just having one mansion that you go in and you've got like loads of backtracking to get to certain areas and that, this it keeps it concise, it puts you in the right part of the mansion, you've got a smaller way to look around things, and it just makes it a little bit almost of a speedier process at times, which is a bit stupid to say because some missions are absolutely huge, but it means that you're never really spending too long doing the same thing and objectives do actually change it's not just a case of getting all the ghosts and finding mario like in the first game it's getting the ghosts it's collecting gems it's uh the, the spider webs all over in one mission and you've got to go around and you've got to get rid of the spider webs there's just all sorts of secrets hidden all over the place so it's a proper exploration game you've got to look in every nook and cranny you possibly can do to find as much treasure as you can to upgrade your vacuum cleaner your, your polter gust which it's pretty much an automatic upgrade system basic you like get coins and it says hello this is the upgrade system you've just got this and it can be either increasing, for example, your dark light, which is one of the new items on the game, or it can be increasing your power meter when you're sucking the ghosts up. And I will show the power meter off and explain it and all that. Your um, dark light, though, is basically this, and you've got to meet them in the top right corner, and that's how it increases as you get upgrades and that. And it's just a really good upgrade system. It's something that Luigi kind of needed. Uh, the, the first game kind of needed a bit more depth to it, and this one has it. The only problem is it can be spammed. It, it, you can simply go level one over and over and over again, level two over and over and over again, and constantly get the coins. And, and it does therefore mean that if you really are struggling, all you need to do is keep replaying levels to get better powers to be able to go in and make the game a little easier. That's not to say that the game is easy. The game is actually quite difficult. It's one of the harder games that Nintendo's released in a long time, and I love it for that. However, one of the reasons that it's actually quite a hard game is the controls and this is pretty much the only major gripe I've got with the game as you might have noticed it's not a circle pad game it's not a circle pad pro anyone who played the original will know that it was a dual analog game and it was one of the things that was praised about because it was pretty much the first dual analog game to be fair Nintendo ever did because obviously they went from the N64 to the GameCube this was a launch game and it worked really well you just basically had one analog to move around and one to like aim your vacuum cleaner and that and it did work amazingly well I loved it so when the Circle Pad Pro was announced and they said that the XL one would be coming out just in time for Luigi's Mansion, I thought, oh, that must mean. And then you get it, and it doesn't have it. And it does hinder gameplay a bit, because once you start doing something, you're locked into that direction. So, uh, as you might have already noticed, and I'll show it again now, 
you've got your torch and it's no longer a case of you just like have to keep flicking the torch on your torch is always on but instead you've got to charge it up and you've got to do bigger flashes to get the ghosts now that i'm locked into this i now can't turn around so if a ghost goes behind me i've got a flash and then i've got to turn around and then charge it up and you probably notice there there is a huge delay in being able to move turn charge again and it does mean that quite a lot of the time you will actually get hit purely because of the control system whereas instead if you could have just turned it and yes there'll be a lot of people saying well that would have made it easier but it would have just made it more playable it's just one of those things when you go from dual analog to single analog you're going to notice the difference same as when you go from single up to dual you're going to notice the difference and i just don't understand why they've decided to go backwards they keep saying a lot of these things like well we we don't want anyone to feel like they would need these uh, the, uh, things to play the game we, we never want to feel like force people onto that so if that's the case why don't you just do this control system that you've got here and make it optional no one would then feel like they had to get the circle pad pro however the majority of people would recommend it saying yeah it's something that you're going to like need to help you play the game a little bit but you can beat it the way that it's designed to be beaten i suppose and it, it just is it's a little annoying um but that really is my only gripe in the entire game i mean graphically it's a huge upgrade i think it looks absolutely fantastic musically it sounds amazing and i wish i could let you listen to a little bit of it especially the um little music jingle that you've got on your not so much cell phone but it, if anyone played the original you had the game boy horror on this you've got the dual screen and it, it plays a jingle and you've got to then answer it as quickly as you can and it, it just everything like that all the little things are done so well it's just a shame about the controls that sometimes it can really hinder you but this is what i mean by the bar and now that i've finally found a ghost um and the bar goes up and if the ghost has a lot of energy then it means you can fill the bar bigger and the bigger you fill it then the better bonuses you get because you can get gold bars and that for filling the bar and then pushing it at the right time to suck them up and to drain a lot of energy from them and it's not an instant win type system it's not a, as soon as you get it you don't automatically suck the ghost up there's quite a lot of the time that you'll charge the bar and you'll need to actually get a full charge and then another full charge in order to suck the ghost up and and it, it does again work well and it adds a lot more depth to the game and that's pretty much what they've done they've, they've took the first one that was quite basic and they've managed to make this absolutely massive in comparison especially with the fact that there's actually six mansions in the game you've got five mansions in the main game the one player and then you've got another mansion for the multiplayer but it, it's just like multiplayer specific stuff and it's pretty much probably what I'm going to have to push on to next because I'm already running out of things I can actually see about the single player. I've mentioned the objective system. I mean, at the moment on this one, I've got to find four cogs and it'll show you on the map where you're supposed to be going. And the map does work well. You can obviously zoom it in, change the flow on that. Uh, the bottom screen also shows your health, your gold, how many keys you've got in lieu and just things like that. And it is just a lot like a Resident Evil style game. The whole point is you've got to go around, you've got to solve the puzzles. Some rooms will be blocked off by just things that don't make any sense. So you've got to look around. So for example, this here, I can't get into this room, but there's some wallpaper sticking off there. And when it lets me get it, I'll uh, suck that up and all of a sudden there's a secret passage I go in here and it'll let me view into the room and I'll be able to possibly work out how to get into the room by just having a viewpoint having an inside reason why I can't get in so for example the door was locked and that's why because there's a lot of crap in front of the thing so that it means there's got to be another way into the room and you've got to find it and discover it and it's just an amazing premise it really does work well it it really does take everything that was great about the first game makes it better in every way except the control system and, and it's a shame that that really is the only downside i've got and it's especially when you're fighting things like these the bats because they're just so speedy the amount of times you'll get hit because you're trying to charge your torch up to flash them and next thing you know they're behind you in the hitting but uh, yeah, that, that pretty much is all I can say about the single player uh, without really going into enough to then spoil it for people. So I will suppose I'll move on to the multiplayer now. Right, just while this is very quickly loading up, there's uh, three multiplayer modes. You've got Hunter, which is, I believe, the one that I've set up here. Uh, well, the whole point is you use your teamwork to rid the floor ghosts before the clock strikes zero. 
you've got rush which is a race to the top and you've got to pick up clocks to extend the time and then you've got pull a pup where you've got to track down the pesky pups with your dark light device and capture them before the time runs out the multiplayer mode is designed for four people and that's the only downside I've really got with the game because it means that if you, there are only two of you then you are going to be quite a bit hindered. Um, as you might have noticed you all play as Luigi, uh, obviously I say all, there's only obviously two of you and one of the good things is you're not locked onto each other's screen so I'm in this room and my brother's in that room so it, it means that you can actually just like all search around and communicate with everyone if you're in the same room and just see if you need help but there are there is a system on the um actual game itself where you, you push the d-pad and it tells you if like it'll give a message to other players saying like help over here just things like that and the multiplayer does work really well it's something that i've never heard anyone complain about it i don't have any complaints about it myself and it, it is just an absolutely awesome game it, it, it's it's nice when you do get multiplayer like that because I, i'm so sick to death of tacked on multiplayer modes that ruin the game and it, it does start a great in this day and age because it seems like if a game doesn't have multiplayer or an online pass then it doesn't sell and then more devs do it and more devs shouldn't be doing it because there's a lot of the time their multiplayer is terrible so it's nice that the Nintendo have gone out made an absolutely massive single player game far bigger than the first one and managed to include a huge multiplayer mode that works really well and you've got three different modes for it as well as I say and it's just it really does astound me just how much i like this game i really wish that it had circle pad pro support because then i wouldn't have a single bad thing to say about it there's a ton of unlockables as well including some for the multiplayer and i'm probably going to die while i uh, read these out so i'll just stand here so hopefully you can at least see my brother fighting a ghost in the background um, but basically, as you go along, you'll find booze. You've got to find booze to unlock different things, uh, so like gradual infiltration, hostile intrusion, and that. There's e, e guard medals that you get for rewards for doing well in the game. There's endless modes of hunter, polter pup, rush, and a surprise endless mode. And uh, you've got to beat, for example, beat your hunter mode in 25 foot scarecraper or whatever the hell I said this version was called, and then uncreate a scarecraper. It lets you do it. There's there's a golden frame that you can get for your border as well so th th there's just a load of nice little things that you can get for the completionist because there is a medal system as you might have already seen at the start of the vid where I went in and you get ranked with how well you do and that will be depending on things like your time I think how much health you've lost it depends on uh, how much cash and treasure you've found and it just means that again there's a lot of replayability because you're going to want to replay them to get the better rankings to get the exclusive stuff even though it's just little daft things like a statue and a golden frame and medals and things like that um as you might have noticed there's a lot of objects as well to interact with and i suppose that's something i should mention about the game and unfortunately no matter what i do i can't get this damn thing off at this moment in time uh so i might be trapped in this room but uh there are a lot of objects and it does come into the puzzles quite a bit there's for example uh, webs that you've got to suck up balls of web that you've got to then set on fire and then set big webs on fire and the, there's just all sorts all over the place there's one of the things that i've mentioned uh, in passing is the dark lighting you might be wondering what it is and you might have already seen me use it a bit it basically allows you to see things that aren't actually there so you have to constantly go into a room and shine it on things to find hidden secrets and hidden things like for example the vase over there that i couldn't see before and it means that again there's more replayability because you're going to constantly be going through the levels and trying to shine your torch everywhere to make sure that you haven't missed anything because you'll be surprised at just what you have missed there'll be doors to hidden rooms with loads of treasure in it and it's just an absolutely it really is an amazing system uh there's, there's nothing i can see wrong about the main game and the multiplayer other than the controls it truly is one of the greatest uh 3ds games i've ever played and it's up there with one of the greatest games i've ever played i absolutely love this game um 
I really can't think of anything else I can actually say about it. So I suppose all I can say is if you've been wondering about it and if you're still unsure and haven't yet decided to pick it up, I don't think there's a demo. But seeing as there's a promotion currently on where you buy th um, three games and you get another one free if you're in Europe, then it's something well worth looking into because even if, for example, you've bought two games already and you can't think of a third one, pick this one up. You'll then get a free game, so even if you absolutely hate this, which I'd be amazed if people did hate it, but then it means that you've got a free game to, you know, ease your pain of disliking it. And I, I really do think it's a fantastic promotion that they're doing for this reason, because there's games that I've been able to give me mates that they weren't sure on, but because I got them for free, I've said to them, you know what, there you go, have the game, try it. <laughs> and this is actually one of them, because purely your selfish reasons that I want to be able to play the game for player with someone. Uh, to be fair, selfish reasons of my and my brother because we're sick of just playing it ourselves we'd like a, a full team of four so there we go then that's been the review i hope you found it helpful i don't score the games because that's based purely on opinion so instead i'll leave you to make your own mind up so thanks for watching and if you've got any questions about the game that i didn't answer in the vid or that hasn't been answered in the comments then feel free to ask and i'll help if i can also if you did find it helpful don't forget to check out my channel because there's plenty more like this up there and don't forget to subscribe because there'll be plenty more to come as well. So until next time, this has been Demon212, signing off.